What? Solo cabin pricing at Carnival? everybody, I am Sherlyn Michael, SIG Cruiser, that's solo, introvert, and gluten-free cruiser. Hey, if this is your first time visiting my channel, feel free to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll know when I upload a fresh new video and like and share. So a common question or common comment that I get about solo cruising is, hey, don't you have to pay double? Or I would love to cruise solo and I would if I didn't have to pay double, but it's so much more expensive than cruising with somebody else. Or I can only afford to cruise if I have a roommate. So before the cruising industry pretty much shut down, I actually did a comparison on a couple of different ships, similar cruises, and I was actually pretty surprised at what I found. So I knew I wanted to do a video about it. Now the thing about doing the video at this time is because cruises have pretty much shut down, there weren't very many cruises to do the comparison on. But I did manage to find one cruise to do a kind of similar fair comparison, but I know I'm gonna have to do this video again when we start cruising again, when there are more cruises scheduled across each lines to do a fair comparison. But Let's get started. So the first cruise that I picked was the Norwegian Escape. So I'm going to look at the Norwegian Escape going to the Bahamas from Orlando. The month I picked was March, going to Nassau Bahamas, Grand Bahama Island, and Great Stirrups K Bahamas. I'm going to compare that to the Carnival Liberty. Both of them are four day cruises. The Carnival Liberty is going to Half Moon Key and Nassau. Now, one thing I want to say about this comparison, at this time, Norwegian is offering discounts. They have an open bar, they have specialty dining, shore excursions and Wi-Fi specials. Carnival does not have any specials, but because Norwegian has the open bar, we will consider the cheers package and figure that into our comparison. So before we look at solo pricing, I want to look at what the pricing would be for two people. So on Norwegian Escape, the price per person is $596.50. Again, this is a four day cruise. This departs March 11th through the 15th of 2021. It is an inside cabin. So for two guests, it's 878 plus 315 in taxes and port fees for a total of 1193. And that comes to $596.50 per person. Now for the Carnival Liberty, again, looking at an interior cabin for two people, the price would be $450.64 per person, but we're going to add in the cheers package to get a similar comparison to the Norwegian Escape since the open bar is already included in that. So that would bring it up to $710 per person with the cheers package on the Carnival Liberty. Now we'll look at solo cruising. Now on the Norwegian Escape, they have solo cabins. So that's what I picked for our comparison. So looking at the Norwegian Escape, a solo cabin on this four day cruise would be $806.50. Now let's compare that to the Carnival Liberty. Now Carnival does not have solo cabins on any of their ships. But to do the comparison, I picked an upper lower interior. Now the upper lower interior, I believe it has one or two twin beds, maybe a pullout or something like that. So the upper lower interior is $694.64 per person. But if we add in the cheers package, that will bring it to $953.61 per person which is an extra $147.11 over NCL. Now, in addition to pricing, there are some other things that you may want to consider. So on the Norwegian Escape, the solo cabin in size is 100 square feet. Now, as we said before, drinks are included and the capacity of the ship is a little bit over 4,000 passengers. Now, if we compare that to the Carnival Liberty, 
instead of 100 square feet. The upper lower has 185 to 220 square feet. As we said, the drinks are extra and it's a little bit of a smaller ship holding about 2,900 passengers. So in the Carnival Liberty is not a solo cabin and it will be a regular size room. Whereas on the Norwegian Escape, that's a pretty small room, 100 square feet, but some people don't mind. Now, other things to consider as a solo cruiser, if you travel a day ahead, maybe you split the hotel room with someone else. As a solo cruiser, you may have to take that on yourself. Also, if you drive to the port, Maybe you split the driving and parking fees with someone else or other people, but of course going solo, those are additional costs that you take on yourself. Now, other things to consider between the ships are the atmosphere. Whether you like one line versus another, that's a consideration too, and that's something that's gonna be a personal preference. So let's do an overall comparison. So for double occupancy is $596 and 50 cents per person on, on the Norwegian Escape. And on the Carnival Liberty, it was $450.64 per person. But if you wanted the Cheers package, that brings it up to $710. And that's with two people. Going solo on Norwegian Escape is $806.50. On the Carnival Liberty, it's $694.24. Or with the Cheers package, $953.61 per person. But one thing to note here is that sailing solo is not actually double the price. So if you're traveling with someone else on Norwegian, you're paying about $600 per person. Now, in that case, if you're someone who doesn't drink and you don't use the drink package, you could sail solo on Carnival for roughly $100 more. And perhaps if you're able to couple the solo pricing with the strategy I provided for sailing multiple cruises, maybe that's something that can make it affordable. So I did want to go ahead and do this comparison right now, but it doesn't look as good as when I did it before the cruising industry shut down. I actually found pricing that was actually equal and lower. So if you haven't done this before, this may be an exercise that you want to try. But like I said, I am going to try this again in the future. So hey, if you like today's video, why don't you go ahead and hit that thumbs up. And again, if this is your first time visiting my channel, feel free to subscribe, hit the notification bell, like, and share. All right, y'all.